Hello students, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I will start the second chapter of your syllabus that is relations and functions. And in this chapter, we are going to study the concept of cross multiplication of two sets, relations and functions. And to study this chapter, you should have the idea of the sets and uh, you should have the idea of the operations on the sets and also the different uh, way of representation of the sets. This chapter is very easy and it's very very important because uh, most of the portion of your syllabus depends on this concept and this is a foundation for the subject. That's why you have to study this correctly and uh, you have to understand the concept in, at the root level that is very important and uh, that's why you just uh, listen it correctly it's very simple and uh, moreover there will be more weightage for the annual examination on this chapter and it's not lengthy chapter now let us start with the syllabus the first concept is cartesian product of sets and uh, let us take two sets in the beginning and I will take the set A is equal to A comma B comma C and the set B is equal to 1 comma 2 here in B there are two elements in A there are three elements now to find A cross B just I will represent this pictorially how to find A cross B and let us take A is uh, the set A is three different houses and there are three different houses and set B is two different offices just uh, to understand let us assume that A, B, C are three different houses and one and two are two different offices and let us represent it uh, in a diagram A is one house and there is a route there is a path from a like this there is a this is a road from the house a and there is another house b and this is the road and uh, third house c and this is the road and there are two offices and i will represent it horizontally and uh, this is one office and this is the road of the office and it will reach other destination that it reach other destination and there is another office too and this is the road of that office it will reach some other place and if it is like this here if the persons from the houses have to go to different offices then you know the different ways they can reach the point and uh, there will be a junctions and uh, these junctions you can just observe the junction and how you can name this junction you know the representation of the junction suppose a person from the house a wants to go to office one then he has to pass through this junction and if you want to name this junction how you can name and you can name like this that is a comma one you can represent like this this is junction a one and i will represent it a comma one and that is the one element of the cross product of these two sets and just see here a cross b is equal to a one that is the first junction you can observe this junction and this, that is a one and similarly there are many other junctions and you can name in a different way and next let us come to the second junction and that is a2 and uh, next one is b1 just see here b1 next one is b2 and next one is c1 see this point that is c1 and next one is c2 
and uh, these are the junctions and we can name like this and this itself the cross product of two sets and here we have taken the set a as the first set that means person from a should go for different offices and similarly person from b and person from the house c should read the offices and these are the junction which are the cross product of two sets that is a cross b and similarly the persons from the office can go back to the house again and uh, again the same junction but the route is different that means here from a to office 1 but whereas from office 1 to house a the route is different that's why you will have the different ordered pair of elements and uh, that is called as b cross a and uh, we can represent the b cross a like this b cross a is equal to from 1 to a that is just here from the office 1 to house a 1 a and uh, 1 b see this point that is 1 b and uh, 1 c this is 1 c and next 2 a this is 2 a and next 2b this is 2b and 2c that is 2c and this is the b cross a and suppose there is uh, one more office and you can get the, this call office 3 then we will have the other junction like this and uh, we can find the cross product and there is still there are three more elements a3 b3 and c3 and uh, in b cross a also there will be three more elements 3a 3b and 3c in general we can observe that if a is having m elements and b is having n elements and uh, that is uh, n of a is equal to m and uh, n of b is equal to n n of b is equal to n then how many elements will be there in a cross b and a cross b will have m n elements and you can observe that in a cross b and b cross a in both the cross multiplication we will get the same number of elements m n because you know that multiplication is commutative m n is equal to n m and uh, that's why a cross b and b cross a have the same number of elements but they are different elements they need not be same element elements are different but number of elements will be same this point you should note and moreover while writing i have written in one order a1 a2 b1 b2 c1 c2 and some suppose if you change like this instead of going a1 a2 if you write like this a1 b1 c1 a2 b2 c2 and if you write like this that also represents a cross b and let us define the cross product of two sets see the definition given two non-empty sets p and q the cartesian product cross product is also called cartesian product P cross Q is the set of all ordered pair of elements from P and Q that is P cross Q is equal to the set P comma Q this is called ordered pair you have to write in this form only that is two elements separated by comma and in an arc bracket you have to represent the bracket like this only and uh, such that p is an element of p that is p belongs to p and q belongs to q this is the definition of p cross q now we take this example how to find the cartesian product of two sets if a is equal to 1 3 5 7 and b is equal to 2 5 8 you can find a cross b better you write in a particular order and hence uh, you will not uh, miss any element that's why you start with the first element of A 
to all the elements of b one by one and then come to the second element this way if you write it then there is no chance of missing any elements see this what is a cross b what are the different elements of a cross b the first element is 1 comma 2 1 comma 2 what is the next element you can guess no 1 comma 5 next element 1 comma 8 what is the next element here 1 2 1 5 1 8 completed what is the next element you have to take the second element of a and what will be the next element 3 2 next 3 5 next 3 8 and what is the next element here 3 completes next you go to 5 what is the next element 5 2 and next element is 5 5 next element is 5 8 and 5 completes next come to 7 and what is the next element 7 2 next 7 5 and the last element is 7 8 and close to the lower bracket while representing it is very important after every pair of element you have to separate by comma this comma you should write because you know that while representing the set while writing the element you separate it by comma and a cross b itself a set a cross b itself a set and each element is here one ordered pair of element this is one element here one comma two itself an element one comma five itself an element and this is the way of representation of the cross product of two sets now you remember these results two ordered pairs are equal if and only if the corresponding first elements are equal and the second elements are equal take this example see here if x comma y is equal to 3 comma 1 this type of question will be asked in the exam if x comma y is equal to 3 comma 1 and what does this implies here these two ordered pairs are equal if first element of the first ordered pair and first element of the second ordered pair are equal that is x equal to 3 this implies that x equal to 3 and y is equal to 1 this y is equal to 1 these two are equal if x equal to 3 and y is equal to 1 see the next result if there are p elements in a and q elements in b then there will be p q elements in a cross b this is very simple and mathematically that is if n of a is equal to p you know the notation of n of a that is cardinality of the set a number of elements in the set a is equal to p and number of elements in the set b is equal to q then number of elements in the set a cross b is p q now if p is equal to q then definitely p cross q and q cross p are equal and second result is if p is not equal to q then p cross q is not equal to q cross p and remember these two result even the p cross q is not equal to q cross p number of elements in p cross q is equal to number of elements in q cross p are same anyhow in both the cases n of p cross q is equal to n of q cross p holds and this result you remember and next result is if a and b are non-empty sets and either a or b is an infinite set then a cross b is also an infinite set and uh, next result is if either p or q is the null set null set means empty set then p cross q will also be empty set now the last result is a cross a cross a is equal to a comma b comma c where a comma b comma c belongs to a 
and here we have taken a cross a cross a that is all the three sets are same if different sets are there that is a cross b cross c then you have to write a comma b comma c said that a belongs to a b belongs to b and c belongs to c that is how we have to take and here a b c is called an ordered triplet and if only two elements are there we call ordered pair here if three elements are there then it is called ordered triplet and this completes the first concept of this chapter and let us discuss the problems in the next video thank you